Welcome to the ESC Congress 2015. Uh, my name is Julia Grabsa and I'm the chair of uh, ESCVI Club 35 and I would like to welcome my colleague, uh, Dr. Carmen Olmos from Madrid, Spain. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, so I've uh, actually read and I, I attended your abstract and that was a congratulations for your amazing research and that was on infective endocarditis and that's quite contemporary because we have the new guidelines of infective endocarditis published on this congress and you validate, you created and validate a risk score mm -hmm. for patients with infective endocarditis. You had a huge population of 1,299 patients and then you developed this risk score. Could you tell us more about that? Yes, uh, we are a, a multi-center working group of the three hospitals in Spain. And as you have said, we have nearly uh, 1,300 patients with infective endocarditis. And our aim was to create and to validate a risk score for cardiac surgery in infective endocarditis. So we first create our score in one of the samples of our cohort. Uh, and then we apply this uh, score to our validation sample in which we validate our score. So uh, we have the feeling that uh, current scales like Euroscore or another more uh, recently developed were not uh, very uh, accurate for predicting risk uh, for surgery in infective endocarditis. So we wanted to create a score that we have the feeling that it would be more appropriate in this, in this uh, field. So this is a score that when you see a patient with infective endocarditis, you will automatically know if the patient will do well or not after surgery? I think it's, it's going to be a score that is gonna, going to help, mm -hmm. but uh, you still have to... to this uh, is, is not only like numbers, like figures, you have, only, uh, you have also uh, feel or evaluate the patient in a daily basis and according to, to your clinical evaluation, uh, mm -hmm. you can also apply the score and it could be of help, but not it could be the only tool. So always the clinical scenario yes. might change. So if you were uh, in the daily practice and you have a patient with infective endocarditis, do you think that will be a number one parameter that you would, would really alarm you and you would take to the patient to theatres directly? I think that the, the parameter that will uh, alarm me more, it could be like septic shock or a sign of persistent infection. But when the patient had uh, already septic shock, uh, the surgery in this scenario is a very high risk uh, surgery. So maybe the, the, the alarm sign that it uh, oriented me to uh, send the patient to surgery would be cardiac... Uh, uh, the compensation? Yes. Mm. That's perfect. And uh, I read the paper uh, that you published recently on the American Journal of Cardiology about thrombocytopenia in patients with infective endocarditis. Mm -hmm. How important is thrombocytopenia? Uh, thrombocytopenia is a risk, is a marker uh, for sign of persistent infection uh, and it, uh, the patient can uh, progressively uh, be in worse and go into septic shock. So it's an early marker. Mm -hmm. But I think that you have to take into account a lot of different uh, clinical signs, clinical findings, and this is one of them. That's perfect. So as a conclusion, you have a validated risk score for surgery in patients with infective endocarditis, but the most important message is to take into consideration many clinical parameters and not, yes. of course, only one in order to assess appropriately a patient with, who is ra rather sick and decide whether to take him to theatres or yes, not. Yes, that's, that's completely correct. Thank you so much and it was a great pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Okay. Bye.